And the good thing about working with voxels is that all these parts that were very close together in proximity, they're somewhat welded together now. Okay, it's like sticking different pieces of clay together. And uh, that's how voxels work. All right, so I'm gonna hit the wireframe hotkey. And I'm gonna switch my shader again. I can scroll to the bottom of the tool panel and choose Smooth All a few times. And this has kind of a melting type of effect as well as smoothing. You can see it helps to close any gaps that I may have here. The lower the resolution, the more dramatic this Smooth All effect is going to have. The higher the resolution, the least effect it's going to have. Okay, so I'll smooth all once again. And so that worked pretty well for the fingers area. And we want to be a little bit careful when we're working with voxels because, again, sometimes that effect might be so dramatic that it messes with some of the smaller parts. So um, I'm going to stay in voxel mode because there are some tools that really work well in voxel mode for closing all the gaps in the seams. One of those is the fill tool. This is probably a better option than trying to smooth because it's first going to fill all the cracks and the crevices to which then we can apply smoothing. Sometimes you can start off on the ends and just kind of work your way toward the middle. And that often works out well. a few times here. I don't want it to be quite that strong in this area. Right click and drag up and down to increase the depth level or intensity. Bring it down just a bit and it's still a little bit strong. We'll use something else here momentarily. I'll come back to all the hard parts there in the hip area shortly. So I continue using this tool.
Okay, so I'll try to fill this area in. Okay, then the next thing I might use, oops, hold down the shift key, I want to smooth that part out. And if you have an NVIDIA card, you can go to Geometry and choose CUDA Smooth Boost. And what this will do is use CUDA to help accelerate the smoothing, which on denser models can be a little bit slow or sluggish, so that helps out quite a bit. So it's a little bit too strong here. So while I hold down the shift key, I'm going to right click and drag down to bring down the intensity of the smooth. Hold down the shift key. And try to be a little bit more subtle with it. Oops. And then the grill brush acts as a smooth brush as well as doing as the name implies. It's going to grow outward. The caveat with this brush is it does not respect brush alphas. It's just uniform. But it's really good for this very purpose. Now what we could do, if we wanted to use a freeze tool to kind of isolate this, we can switch to surface mode quickly by clicking on that V icon. Now I'm in surface mode and I have access to using the freeze brush. Okay, so I can paint or use a selection type here to select an area that I want to freeze or mask. I'll just use a brush to do that and I'll check ignore back faces. Now a nifty little trick I want to point out here is sometimes you may want to use something with a little more gusto than just a fill tool or something like this. Maybe you want to apply a free selection in a specific area. Um, like if I wanted to work in this particular area I can choose to go to the paint room and the freeze brush here works in conjunction with the freeze tool in the sculpt room. So whatever you freeze in there is frozen in here. Whatever you freeze in here is frozen in the sculpt room. Doesn't matter. So this means that you can use the conditions menu here where you can paint a free selection in concave areas, uh, in convex areas, and so on. So let's choose concave. Okay, so now with the freeze brush, it should be dark, so let's bring up the contrast.
but you can see it allows me to paint inside the, the crevices to which I can always invert the selection or I could choose to paint on uh, convex areas you see so let me hit control D just as I would in Photoshop to clear a selection and with convex chosen yeah I can freeze this area while building this other area up let me undo it a few times and I'll bring the degree amounts down and you also happen to have some other options for more in curved areas, more in flat areas, and so on. So again, you can take advantage of these conditions here in the paint room, then go right over into the sculpt room. And I still have the freeze tool active, so that means I can just continue to build on this. And I can hold down the control key instead of freezing it's doing just a reverse it's erasing the freeze let me choose a absolute brush here I cranked up my intensity I can hold down the shift key and smooth the boundaries here Okay, so let's choose build up. So yeah, this will let me build up these areas that had these uh, creases from the mannequin. I'll hit Control D to deselect, or in the freeze menu you can choose to unfreeze all. I'm gonna hold the Shift key and smooth this area out just a bit. You also happen to have the option when you're in surface mode, these shift action menus, shift and control shift. And you see you have a menu here that will allow you when you hold the shift key to use a standard smooth, powerful smooth. You can relax, tangent smoothing. You can do a poly reduction, decimate, reconstruct if you've got a trouble area with the geometry. You can add detail and this is kind of like a live clay on the fly if you want. Extra detail is just a little bit higher resolution or it's the same thing but it just gives you a little bit more resolution as you're brushing. And then anti-bump is the newest option here and it's really good for, as the name implies, surface level type of bumps and errors. It tries to keep your overall curvature or the overall proportions of your surface intact but it just focuses mostly on the minor surface discrepancies or deviations. And so it's a very, very good option to start off with. So with the shift action, I can choose Anabump, and let's choose Powerful Smoothing with the second one with Control Shift. So I hold down the Shift key, right click and drag up to increase the smoothing level. So it usually will give you a pretty nice result. Okay. We'll do the same thing right here. And the good thing about this line is it kind of gives you a rib cage. Once you have smooth, you've already got your rib cage already kind of you got a crease there to start it already. And then powerful smoothing, it actually will affect the geometry. So you hold down control shift. So if you've got a trouble spot, sometimes it will reorder the geometry in that area. I use powerful smoothing in this area.
So the last thing I want to point out is that you can not only save a version, obviously, of this file, but you can also take this finished result here and you may want to store it in the models palette. What I did is I saved a mannequin folder. So you can create a new folder to store your individual parts in. So you, all you have to do is just come over to the right side of the layer. When you see this little move icon, you can just click, hold and drag, and drop it right into the models palette. So I'll go ahead and do that now. You'll get a decimation dialog. You can adjust the decimation degree numerically or use a slider here by dragging right in the middle and you can see the destination change as you scrub. I'm going to shoot for about 500k and hit OK. And you can see a thumbnail created for you. It will also maintain the naming of your layer along with this thumbnail and the object. Okay, so you can retrieve this at any point in time on other projects or at other stages in your workflow. Okay, so I hope you found it helpful. Thank you for watching. We will see you next time.